Hey UI team, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at the Australian Commandos Special Forces. Let's get into it. A small group of ordinary Australians are about to take part in one of the toughest military selection courses in the world. A physically and psychologically gruelling six weeks designed to identify potential candidates for the 1st and 2nd Commando Regiments. Extremely specialised, combat capable Australian Special Forces units. A commando is a precision instrument, whether that happens to be a sledgehammer or a scalpel. More than half of the applicants attempting the course will not succeed. The high standard of performance demanded of selection will push and challenge all of those that start. For many applicants, it will overwhelm them. But for a select few, it will grant them access to one of the most sophisticated and extensive military training continuums in the country. We want them to be exposed to as many things in training before they go overseas to war. Through expansive field-based activities, they will challenge and punish their bodies as they prepare for the realities of domestic and foreign conflict in a test of honour, courage and extraordinary personal sacrifice. Yeah, you know it's going to be super hard. Uh, that you, they've done quite well in this documentary, making it sound seriously hard. Uh, Australian Special Forces, a lot of their units, their Special Forces are designed off the British. This is designed the British Army Commandos, actually, so not off our Special Forces, but one of our elite forces. You've got the Australian SAS, um, which is pretty much mirrored our, the British SAS with the same motto, who dares wins. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely look at a video of theirs in a minute, but this is actually off the British Army Commandos, but because they're Special Forces, I'm guessing they're more like our um, SBS, so Special Boat Service. So there's a selection of six weeks to pick their potential candidates, so I'm guessing this isn't the full selection. Um, to be in their Special Forces, I'm guessing that you've got this six weeks to select you, and then you've got a lot more training after that. But it's physically and mentally, it's going to be the toughest thing they've done for sure. At one end of the spectrum, it reminds me of the quote of George Orwell, which essentially says, people sleep peacefully at night because rough men lie ready to do violence on their behalf. There's a truism in that for this regiment and indeed for the commander of the army. We've got men and women who commit themselves in mind, body and soul to going into chaos and uncertainty and resolving problems. They're often they're problems without precedent, often they're problems of a humanitarian nature which is also mixed up in war. And whether we're operating at the humanitarian end of the spectrum or whether we're undertaking the war that we never wanted, these people in this regiment and this command do it willingly and with a, you know, a level of courage and commitment that is uh, without, without peer. Yeah, so true. Any military personnel is exactly that. But Special Forces operator, for sure, you're asking them to go above and beyond into any situation in small teams on your own um, and give your life for whether it's humanitarian or war fighting, uh, you are willing to give it all. And that is literally what you're um, saying you're going to do when you want to become a Special Forces operator, for sure. That's what, that's what they're signing up for. and adaptable military force equipped for fighting in the 21st century. The Army's primary focus is to promote the security of Australia and protect its people and interests. Number one role of the Australian Defence Force is to defend the nation and the nation's interests. The Army is obviously responsible for providing or focusing on the, the land component of that defence or of that capability. While Special Operations Command is a component of Army, it's also inherently joint. Our primary role is to support those larger elements of Army, but also Defence. We're responsible for providing the core of Australia's military domestic counter-terrorist response. So if things of national interest get taken by terrorists or other groups that are beyond the capability of the police, then it'll be the 2nd Commander Regiment that delivers the core of that capability. The 2nd Commando Regiment also has responsibility for advanced force operations and in addition to that we have a contingency role which essentially covers anything that occurs regionally or globally that might require a response at short notice, often with some sort of offensive capability. The term Commando 
was adopted during the Boer War. However, it was first applied in an Australian context to a small element of Australian Special Forces and light infantry units during the Second World War. With the outbreak of war in the Pacific in the 1940s, the Allies had need for a capability that could conduct special operations in the Japanese-held areas of the Dutch East Indies. Inserted along the coast and behind enemy lines, M and Z special units would conduct secret transmissions back to the Australian Intelligence Bureau. Later, independent commando companies were formed in the 1940s. Hundreds of men served in these commando organisations, undertaking significant action against the Japanese throughout New Guinea and Borneo. Australian soldiers represent the pinnacle of strength, integrity and intelligence. This requires them to embody the Army's core values of courage, initiative, respect and teamwork. The Australian commandos have built on this foundation and conduct themselves by a code of moral and personal attributes. The commando attributes are adaptability, resolve, self-discipline, toughness, trainability, teamwork and judgement. It is these attributes that Special Forces instructors will use when assessing applicants for their suitability to serve within a commando regiment. The key objectives of the selection process are to find individuals who are going to be successful commando operators in Australia and overseas. And so we make the selection tough so that we can draw out and select only the individuals that, that have the qualities that we're looking for. Yeah, so from all of that, you've got some seriously highly trained professional soldiers who are willing to go everywhere and anywhere. Uh, small unit, a bit like our special forces, they're actually a very, very small part of the British Army. There isn't many of them compared to the, the Army or the military as a whole would be taking SAS, SBS, SRR. Uh, but they play a vital role. They go in days, weeks ahead to countries that the majority of us don't go to, to do those bigger types of operations, um, the ones that they are trained to do. If someone has a significant flaw in their character, then one of these attributes will be lacking. So a guy who comes to uh, apply for Special Forces needs to display these attributes consistently. Uh, we found that if any one of those attributes are flawed, then they won't be a successful commando. Commando employment is highly sought after in the Australian Defence Force, but selection standards are among the toughest in the world. The commando selection process is so demanding that an entry test is held for those wishing to undertake it in order to ensure that they have adequately prepared themselves. Prospective candidates must demonstrate high levels of physical and mental ability before they will be considered for the rigours of the selection course. If I was asked... Uh, that's actually a really good way of doing it um, and it's similar to what other courses do in the UK Special Forces. They do something called a briefing course. They're doing this so you have to do that to show you've got the minimum requirements, the attributes it's before you even go on to the se selection process. Then you have to even go and do the really tough selection process um, to see if you've actually got it all to pass that to go on. So it's a good way of doing it um, to make sure you're definitely going to get somewhere on the course and you're not just going to fail straight away on the first day. Before they can be admitted into the commando selection course, applicants must first pass the Special Forces entry test to ensure that all members are able to withstand the rigour of selection. The seven-hour physical assessment can be attempted by any currently serving member of the ADF and those who have enlisted through the Special Forces Direct Entry Recruiting Scheme. I am 30 years old. I come from the Gold Coast. So let's just... Uh first pass the special forces entry test to ensure that all Watch members that. are able to withstand just want to see what that said again. The seven hour physical assessment can be attempted by any currently serving member of the ADF. And so it allows everyday Australians to join the army and directly enlist in to become a commando. And those who have enlisted through the special forces direct entry recruiting scheme. Yeah, so interesting you can uh, just go straight in. Um, with uh, UK Special Forces, you normally have to do a little time, serve a little time, get a bit of experience, and then you can apply. And these you can go directly in, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, sometimes people have just got it. You haven't got to have experience, they prefer it, but sometimes you don't need it. 23, 
I uh, grew up in uh, sort of northern New South Wales and uh, went to secondary school down in... For the Australians out there, what's a jackaroo? Can you let us know in the comment section? Sydney, a couple of years of university, a year in the Territory after that. Um, I just, yeah, now I'm here trying for the commandos. Scientifically designed, the entry test will determine an applicant's suitability for taking part in the commando selection course. Applicants are measured against each other to make certain they are adequately prepared to undertake the training. Today, 75 young Australians have volunteered to take part in a special forces entry test. Down. Cuts the knee to ground, follows just a touch. Over Down. the next seven hours, they will be assessed both physically and psychologically by special forces instructors. Down. By the end of the day, only a fraction of these applicants will be considered for commando selection. Straight arms, do that again and back up into the same exercise. Down. Most of the applicants are young, fit and above all ambitious. They'll be extremely challenged by this assessment. The entry test has been designed to assess the applicant's suitability for further commando training. With the exception of the cognitive screening stage, it is fundamentally a physical assessment. The applicants are tested on core-based muscular strength and flexibility exercises, as well as their physical endurance and speed, whilst carrying heavy loads. Reach forward, your fingers into the bar, then you're going to push forward as far as you physically can. From this there, is probably the biggest game of recovery of their life. Those that don't recover won't remain. Looking now for a perfect demonstration of the push-up zone compass. The standard requires each applicant to correctly demonstrate perfect form in every exercise, or else they will fail that component. Don't free up the feet. The applicants are measured against each other. A little more than half the candidates attempting the test will be allowed to progress to the commando selection course. So every physical assessment is critical. We often talk about toughness, not fitness. So toughness relates to the ability of a commando operator to put up with tough physical conditions and not just be fit in a traditional sense, but be able to work hard, march, carry a heavy pack with limited uh, food and drink for many hours and then be physically capable to survive a combat situation where they are pushing their bodies to the absolute limit. So it's about being tough. Yeah, that's like a lot of arduous courses, you know, sometimes not the fittest people pass because uh, they start hitting the wall, they get, you know, start feeling the pain and then they mentally give up. Can you put up with the bad weather? Can you carry that, you know, burden on your back? Can you, you know, when your feet are hurting, you got blisters or, you know, you've got a few muscle soreness, can you keep going? You know, it's got to be physically fit, but like you said, you've got to be tough as well. The Special Forces Direct Recruiting Scheme provides just a few months of training experience prior to selection. Every activity undertaken by these young soldiers will be monitored closely by instructors. No one is willing to show signs of inexperience or weakness. After 124 consecutive cadence push-ups, the last applicant rises to his feet. Wow. It is this kind of raw endurance and mental resolve that instructors are trying to uncover in the applicants. That was a good amount of push-ups, that. A select group of experienced combat veterans, these instructors have literally survived hostile combat in both Iraq and Afghanistan, not once, but for some of them on multiple occasions. Having deployed with Australian, British and US Special Forces units on operations all over the world, they are uniquely qualified to identify potential candidates for commando initial training. Tough, ruthless and without compromise, they are the soldiers who will ensure that these applicants are physically and mentally ready for conflict and war. Seventy-five ordinary Australians are bidding for admission into the ADF's 1st or 2nd Commando regiments. Under the strict guidance of military instructors, they've been rigorously tested on their strength, speed and endurance. 
In most cases, prospective applicants have trained tirelessly for months and each believes that they have what it takes to earn a place on the selection course. By the end of the day, some will be proven wrong. The candidates prepare themselves for the next phase of the entry test. Physically drained by four hours of initial... 5K march, uh, carrying 40 kilos, which is heavy. You know, you're talking close to 90 pounds. Uh, some heavy weight. 5K, not far, but we'll see what the pace in that is. Um, see what it's like. To fitness assessments. They must now prepare themselves for a trial of stamina and resolve. Key indicators for selection on a physical aspect. Um, the, the main thing for us is recovery, uh, as well as um, performance. So definitely performance during the, the given task. If it's performed to the correct specification, speed or repetitions, uh, depending on what activity uh, is required. If they are still able to direct and or take direction, and definitely recovery after that, and be able to do that again. With 40 kilograms strapped to their backs, the applicants must carry the equivalent weight of two standard cartons of beer over a five kilometer distance. This is an endurance march assessment. The sheer strain of this task would be challenged enough for the applicants when fully rested, but given their prior testing, not everyone is likely to pass the test. However, should have to tell you, take on water as you're going round, little and often. Now, don't just pay it off, take on water as you're going round. Move across to the start line. Dehydration is commonplace during military pack marches. Under the burden of a heavy pack, the body's core temperature can rise drastically and, if untreated, fatally. The Australian Army takes this type of training very seriously and ensures that all members are fully aware of the potential hazards of heat illnesses. Instructors are careful to ensure the applicants follow proper techniques for performing the march, not just to minimise injury, but to monitor the applicant's potential for trainability. So they haven't said what pace it's at in a minute. 5K isn't far, 3.1 miles. Um, 40 kilos is a lot of weight. Um, but they're not running it. They're not allowed to shuffle. They're not running. They just set off at a tabbing pace. And they're not carrying weapons. But that 40 kilos is obviously going to carry a lot. And as we know, Australia gets gets hot out there. Um, so that could play a huge part of the temperature out there. Personally, 5K is not far for an endurance test. of I'm speaking of special forces. Um, special operations but this is only the, the entry test the selection day um, so they're not going to do miles and miles um, this is obviously just to see the minor app you know the, the attributes um, but yeah 5k isn't far I thought it would have been further um, but yeah let's just continue to see we'll see what happens as with the fitness exercises earlier in the day the applicant's performance during the pack march is measured against that of his peers. Only those that have prepared themselves well can be considered for commando selection. So applicants need not only to finish, but to finish strongly. Selection is challenging because it has to be, because uh, our job is challenging. Physically, the selection course is designed to be gruelling and tough to, be, to select the, uh, the top tier candidate. With only two laps completed, exhaustion is already taking its toll. But with three kilometers of the course remaining, what little resolve the applicants have left will soon be tested. We put these guys into environments where uh, they are going to be tested. And, uh, and so we must test them under you know, tough, uh, stressful situations here in Australia because only then will we know whether they're going to be able to cope in those environments. And at the end of the day, your teammate's life is relying on you being able to do your job in the, in the worst of conditions. So it's a tough job and we only want the toughest for that job. Most of the applicants have begun their final lap of the five kilometer pack march. The 40 kilograms of military kits strapped onto their backs feels as if it has doubled in weight. A burden that not only hampers their strength, but their conviction as well. Even with the finish line so close, the applicants question their own resolve as they push themselves against mounting fatigue, excessive sweat and searing muscle pain. 
The well-being of the applicants is always a high priority for the instructors. Trained defence medical staff are always on hand to immediately manage any signs of heat stress or injury. You're still up above 39 and a half, mate, righto, which is when we start to look above people. But I said, that man, if we had kept going, that would have been a good 10 minutes above 40, which then would take, you know, the susceptibility could be that you'd be walking back to the uh, swimming pool and you would have dropped it and we wouldn't even known, okay, because it would have taken you that long. Yeah. On the side note as well is that you were sitting in the lower bracket anyway. So no slight on you at the moment for me pulling you on this side of things. Okay? Yeah, there's still the opportunity to go through yeah, again. There's still opportunities, mate. So yeah. don't, don't think negative. Okay. I shake. So don't, don't think that. Even after months of preparation and training, the extremely high physical expectations of commando selection eventually eliminate a large group of the Big Australian, Australian here. I don't think you can you can get to this stage having any other doubts. It's it's the only way they will take me off the course is if I'm injured. Stress fracture injuries, ankles, knees, it's, it's, it's hard to prevent the things that, that, we're, that we're exposed to. So it's not necessarily being worried about the injuries, it's just manage, manage, managing injuries as they occur and um, being able to push through as best you can with those injuries. Very good. Uh, on this first day, they're not gonna get it over a course like that. Very, very common that on an arduous course you're going to get some sort of injury and you're going to have to manage it. For those applicants who make it across the line, their kit is quickly removed while instructors apply aggressive cooling techniques to lower their very high body temperature. Blistered, fatigued and aching. Nice. They find solace in the knowledge that they have completed the entry test without incident or injury. Swim test always After gets people. Hours of physical assessment, only a portion of the applicants attempting the entry test have progressed to the next phase of selection. So, uh, once the screening has determined who's actually going to start the selection course, they are then uh, brought into the unit and then we will start with the selection activities. Those who have succeeded so far will now commence the commando selection and training nice. course, a hugely challenging and arduous six weeks that by its conclusion, will see even fewer candidates offered a position on the 10 month commando reinforcement training site. Daunting, rocking up on day one, not knowing anything. I guess you're rocking up without any preconceived ideas that anything, anything will happen and anything does happen. The successful applicants, now candidates, are led into the training grounds carrying with them a large array of military kit. They're immediately instructed to unload the 40 kilogram packs and to organize their kit for inspection. The candidates have been ordered to carry specific items, a test that will monitor their capacity for following instructions. A commando operator uh, must be trainable. So we consider trainability one of our key attributes because we require soldiers to go beyond the, the basic level of training they've received and be trained on a large suite of weapons. The equipment that they're working with is often changing. They need to be able to uh, adapt to that new equipment, be safe on that equipment, and uh, we need them to be able to adapt to that equipment very quickly. A commando beret is not handed out lightly. To wear it, a candidate must demonstrate a high level of skill in a range of attributes. Throughout their initial training, Australian commandos are extensively instructed in over a dozen specialised courses at both the individual and team level. Ten months of training is a massive commitment to yeah. undertake. It's also expensive, so instructors must be certain of the candidate's trainability from the very beginning of selection. So true. Trainability is very much linked with recovery. If you can't recover fast enough, uh, you, you're not trainable. Trainability is something we assess on each of the courses during the uh, commando reinforcement cycle. We want to see that individuals can be trained a certain way and then be told that um, the situation has changed and they need to be able to, uh, to adapt to that and uh, pick up those new skills and demonstrate them confidently and safely. Do you have a market panel? I just didn't get one, sir. No just excuse. didn't get one. But no excuse, sir. What is one of the attributes to a commando? 
Which one do you think applies to this? Adaptability, sir. And or? Trainability, sir. Yep. So what are you lacking? Both, sir. You think it's funny? No, sir. Okay. Give yourself some space. A spontaneous and intensive fitness drill is held as penance for the missing item and carried out by the entire group. A reminder that the candidates will not be viewed as an individual but as a collective unit. Ah, it's not going to look good for him on the first day. Not, not a good way to make friends. Burpees hurt. They hurt everyone. So, um, I love burpees. I love burpees. Teamwork is critical in a military operation, so instructors use training techniques to encourage them not to forget. So, the selection course is tough because uh, when guys um, get into an operational environment, when they're in combat, they will do, um, they'll be in some very tough situations and quite often they'll have to deal with situations that are tougher than anything they've done before. So, it's physically and mentally challenging all at once and uh, uh, these guys will tell you that uh, you know it's the toughest thing they've ever done. The instructors are relentless as the candidates are reminded that this is a military selection course where inaccuracy and carelessness for the little details will not be tolerated. 3.2k uh, gear run, not sure how much they're wearing, looks like they got, what's that, webbing? Uh, can see they got webbing of 16 minutes. Uh, it's a quick time. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we've got. 1.6 miles. That's so two miles. Yeah, two mile run. So that's it. 16 miles carry kit. I'm not sure how much kit they're carrying. The and weapon. Up. See, they they hold their weapon by the carrying handle. There, I don't call it a carrying handle. We just don't do it. Like they're all running like it. Um, but yeah, if you know what weight they're carrying, but. Fully kitted out anyway, 16 minutes, it's quick for two miles. Provided with a replica M4 carbine, the current assault rifle for the Australian command. And it's in trainers as well, so it's actually a little bit easier, I wouldn't say it's that quick. Nice. They must carry the rifle for the duration of the 3.2 kilometer pack run, an operationally focused assessment that is widely regarded as one of the most difficult fitness assessments in the military. Let's just go back. See what he says about it, I missed that. The candidates are provided with a replica M4 carbine, the current assault rifle for the Australian commandos. They must carry the rifle for the duration of the 3.2 kilometer pack run, an operationally focused assessment that is widely regarded as one of the most difficult fitness assessments in the military. I don't know. I don't know why they would class it as one of the most difficult fitness assessments in the military. The Australian Army does play a big heat, and I can't, I, you know, I've not been to Australia, so I don't know, but I've done it in other countries. Two miles, they're only carrying webbing, which, or chest figs, which would be heavy, heavy. I can't see a day sack or bergen. They're doing it in trainers, and they're carrying a weapon M4 carbine, which is pretty light for a weapon system. Um, and they haven't got any sort of massive optics on it or any sort of other fancy alley bit of kits. Um, so it's eight minute miles in trainers with a little bit of weight carrying a weapon i wouldn't say me personally that's absolutely rapid and it's one of the hardest tests it's quick but i wouldn't class that as one of the hardest tests and it's absolutely rapid um, let us know your thoughts on that you know comment below um but yeah it'd be interesting to see what uh, you want to say for you know if you're going special forces i just wouldn't say that's quick we do two miles 18 minutes infantry test in boots weapon carrying an sa80 um, carrying 36 pound in a Bergen, wearing a smock and a helmet on P Company. Uh, so, and that's summer, winter. So we do get it in a high or summer, but obviously it's not as hot as Australia. But that's the kit we have to carry in 18 minutes, and that's only two minutes difference. What we're looking for on the 3.2 kilometer run is uh, whether they can uh, move in assault order or battle order or whatever you want to call it with weight um, over a certain distance at speed and. Uh, and, and the speed is 16 minutes or below. Oh, he's got that bad. Oh, he's got that bad. Look at him. 3.16. Lack of sleep, loss of fluids, 
and excessive overworking of the body results in a drop in blood pressure. The lack of oxygenated blood in the brain triggers a weakening of the limbs and fainting is a potential consequence. A sudden collapse occurred as he crossed the finish line. While his resolve is not in question, he failed the test by one minute and is removed from the course. One minute. How many passed? 98, nearly 20. He just fouled by a minute and a half. Filthy. The Special Forces training instructors work tirelessly to ensure the selection and training courses are designed and carried out in safe and appropriate conditions. Candidates are required to meet specific fitness indicators in order to begin these courses. Sometimes, in spite of the instructor's best efforts, the allowable conditions are too much for some individuals. Medical staff are on hand to treat these soldiers for exhaustion, dehydration and fatigue. I'm not surprised that the heat out there, this is happening. The confronting aftermath of the 20 kilometre individual endurance march is testament to its overwhelming difficulty but also a reinforcement of its necessity to ensure that the candidates have appropriately prepared themselves for the course. The brutal realities of war will expose these men to hardship, pain, and a genuine threat of death. So to be adequately prepared, their training must be just as tough. Really interesting to see. I'm definitely gonna look at the other episodes and I'll get them done for you. S some hard training there, some tough people. Uh, you know, you feel for the ones that did make it. Uh, like I said, some of the tests was like not so hard, but the accumulation of them, the heat in Australia, uh, some of them are direct entry. It all builds up, and um, it just you know those injuries just do happen. Really interesting to see. Actually, it looks like a really good unit. I love the little B-roll, the actual clips of the regiment, uh, the commando regiment out on training in Afghan in all their kit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few episodes. Comment below your thoughts for now, and uh, we'll see. Uh, let us know what you want to see next. Cheers.